Geotrig, lesson 14. I'm going to do a recap for the first half, the stuff that we did during our first semester. Um, we should know what sine, cosine, and tangent are. We know the acronym now of SOHCAHTOA. And SOHCAHTOA helps us identify the three trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and what their ratios are. The ratio for sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. These ratios are only good in what kind of triangles? Right triangles. So you can't, they call this right triangle trig. So we use sine, cosine, tangent in right triangles. You should also not only know sine, cosine, tangent, you should know how to do the inverse sine, inverse cosine, inverse tangent to find angles given a ratio. Guys, the biggest thing is that we need to remember that opposite and adjacent are directly related to the angle that you choose. That has that whole idea of when I sit in the front of the room and I said everybody point left. You and I pointed in opposite directions because we were facing different directions. What is opposite of an angle is the side that's opposite. What's next to it is this adjacent side. Hypotenuse always stays the hypotenuse. So those are things that we should remember. We should also remember that we have an angle of elevation. The angle of elevation is when you have an angle from the horizontal, from either where your eyes are looking or from the ground, and you're looking up. Your line of sight moves up. That is called an angle of elevation. If you're above and you're looking down, therefore you have an angle of depression. depression. Okay? So we should know those. We then also talked about um, getting into rectangular and polar form. We started to graph them. Rectangular coordinates, guys, are your xy's. But then we took it a step further, and we started to say, hey, wait a minute. We now can use I hats and J hats. Now, <coughs> granted, these don't have little hats on them. But to I's and J's represent X and Y movements. So I is your left, right. J is your up and down movement. We should have no problem being able to identify or graph 3I minus 4J. That is 3 to the right and 4 down. 1 to the left, 1 up. Negative I plus J. Okay? That's no different than graphing negative 2, 5. 2 to the left, 5 up. Then we got into something we call polar form. Polar form is a different way. It's not left, right, up, down. Now we are spinning around in circles and then walking forwards or walking backwards. That distance forwards or backwards we call a radius. And the other thing that makes a spin is the angle. So we have something we have is r theta. That is the form that we will use. Remember that the positive x-axis is where we start all of our angles. We start those angles, and if you're going up, that is the positive. If you're going down or backwards, whoops, that is negative. So we can have a zero degrees. We can go to 90, 180, 270, back to 360, and on and on and on and on. You can spin around forever. We can also go backwards and say that is zero, it's negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360, and on and on and on. Notice that zero and negative 360 and 360 are all the same place. Negative 270 and 90 happen to be the same place. Those are called coterminal angles. Not sure if we had that yet or not, but um, that is what those are. And you can get to the same place many different ways. Questions? Again, this is all a recap. Then, we went about graphing this. So to graph this, it said, hey, start at the positive x-axis, which means you need the x and y axes. Then, if we're doing this problem, which is the form we will use, 6 is the radius, 50 degrees is your um, degree turn. You're going to turn 50 degrees 
which is give or take about here. And then I am facing in that direction. I will walk a positive six out. So I can put a six here as the radius and I can put 50 degrees inside for the angle. So that means I turned 50 degrees first, walked out six. The next problem, I have to turn a negative 250, which means I go backwards around the circle, and then eventually I have to walk backwards. So be careful, when it's a positive radius, you walk forwards, negative radius, you walk backwards. All a recap of things that we have done, yes? So, let's move on. This is new. So, we're doing coordinate conversion. And here we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to go from rectangular form, I hats and J hats or I's and J's, to polar form, radius and a angle. But I'm not going to look for one answer. I'm going to look for four answers because there are four answers. So, number one, I want you to plot the rectangular coordinates. I want you to graph it. Two, I want you to draw a right triangle. You guys are going to have to add a few words here. Draw a right triangle connecting the origin, the point, and the x-axis. So that in step three, you can label all of your sides that you know. So if I move to the left two, I can put a two underneath that part of the triangle. Make sense? If I go up five on that part of the triangle, I put five. I also, as part of three, I would like you to write in there, label R for the hypotenuse and theta for the angle at the origin. Inside your triangle, please. So those are some additions. Basically, label everything, including the r and theta, which we want to find, which is steps four and five. Four. Wait, so it's r for hypotenuse, theta. Yeah. And then what was four? Four. We're going to use Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse, a.k.a. r, the radius, which basically means a squared plus b squared, and then take the square root. Okay, we should not be struggling with this concept. We know how to square numbers, we know how to add numbers, and we know how to take a square root. Five, after you found the radius, you will go back and you will find the angle, theta. I'm going to tell you this. We're going to find the radius every time, but the radius is something that we find, and it means we have to use numbers to find it, and we could very well be wrong. Could we not? I mean, we're human. We make errors. So we very well could have made somehow either a rounding error, if we go through it with a calculator, or just an arithmetic error. The question I'm trying to get to, or the point I'm trying to make, is if you are given two numbers that if you use those two numbers, you know are 100% correct, wouldn't you trust your answer better than trying to use numbers that you found or created along the way. We found R. I don't want to use R in my calculations later on, if I can avoid it. That's what I'm trying to say. So we're going to say, using the sides of your triangle, those sides will correspond to opposite and adjacent, which is tangent. So you will use tangent, therefore, inverse tangent every single time to solve for the angle. Now, big thing on 6. 6 says, now you need to place them into the correct form, the radius and the angle, polar form. There are four answers. These four answers do not have to be in any particular order as long as there is two of your answers have a radius that's positive. But each one of those positive radius, or radii, I guess, would have one of them has a positive angle and the other one will have a negative. Two of them will have negative radii, but one of them is positive and one of them is negative. Basically, it comes down to a positive, positive, 
a positive negative, negative positive, and a negative negative. Inside, outside. Okay? There are four answers. I need all four answers every single time. Okay, so these are our two examples. We get through this and you guys get your homework. First step, plot it. So I make my axes. I'm going to go negative 3i plus 2j, which is 3 to the wow. left and 2 up. up. That is my point. That is rectangular form. That's negative 3, 2. You guys should have not a problem with this. Step number two says form your triangle, correct? Yes. There's my point. There's the origin. And there's the x-axis. When I say connect to the x-axis, I mean go straight down or straight up to the x-axis, which means I now just form a triangle. I can label this triangle. Now, how did I get to this point over here? I started at the origin, and I went backwards how far? Three. Three. So technically, I possibly on that triangle want to put what there? Negative three. Because it indicates that three is the actual distance. The negative tells me I went backwards. Is that something we all can agree on? And how far up do I go? Two. Two. That should be positive. Kind of makes sense. Now, I bring up the fact that it's a negative because you're going backwards. Because when I use it in my calculations, I'm going to ignore the negative. So when I find tangent, I'm going to use the 2 and a 3, not 2 and negative 3 only because I want to find all my angles in the first quadrant. I'll deal with them later on. Think of it as a triangle. Can a triangle really have a negative length? Okay, so that's why we're going to use the positive 3. Okay, I labeled two of them. I still need to label theta inside and r on the outside. Theta is the angle in my triangle at the origin. Do you have enough information to solve for R? I would hope so. As in, negative 3 squared plus 2 squared equals R squared. Correct? 9 plus 4 equals R squared. 13 equals... Take the... So square root of 13 equals r. Hopefully no issues with finding r. Yeah. So we can just hey, now watch this. If I know r is the square root of 13, I also know there are how many answers? Four. Four. Two of them need a positive square root of 13, and two of them will have negative. Negative. negative square root of 13. Okay, cool? Now I have to find theta. And I told you guys to use which function? Every time. Tangent. tangent theta. What is tangent? Oh, wait, maybe we should write Sokotoa down. Because tangent is opposite over adjacent, what is opposite of theta? Two. Two. Over negative three, I'm going to change it to, though, positive three. I'm not going to use any of the negatives on lengths. Remember the negative? We're going to just say, hey, that was because I knew I was going backwards. Of course, to get theta by itself, now we have to take the... Inverse tangent. Make sure, guys, put the inverse tangent in the front because that is the proper placement so that we can see that theta equals 
inverse tangent of two thirds. So everybody takes their calculators out. You make sure that you're in degree mode. If you're using the gray box calculators, you have to do two divided by three first, then hit second tangent. If you're using a graphing calculator or the others, you may type in second tangent, inverse tangent, and then put two thirds in, hit enter. Be very careful. Get away from, guys, using that fraction button on your calculators. Okay? The fraction button sometimes can mess everybody up. Theta is equal to what? 33.7? Is everybody able to get 33.7? Okay, I took out theta, 33.7, guys, and I put 33.7 into the triangle. This is a very small drawing here, so bear with this. Now, here's the issue. You have a theta, you have an R. But guess what? That combination of that theta and that R is not an actual solution. Where is 33.7 located? Which quadrant? First, second. That's first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. It's in the second quadrant. Do we ever take angles from the second quadrant or start them there? We start them in the first quadrant. So therefore, I actually want to know this angle. What is that angle? A positive angle. It is a positive angle that allows me to turn from here to be facing this direction so I can walk forward square to 13. Now, if I went all the way to over here, how far would that be? 180. It's 180 minus the 33.7 because I'm not going there. Which happens to be 146.3. The red arc right there. I'm going to go the other way now because I still walk forward. Do you guys realize that if I start here and go the long way, I still am facing the direction of I want to go. So I can start here and go all the way around to here, which means start here, turn to here, and then I can walk. How far would that be? It's a negative. Definitely more than negative 180, because negative 180 gets me from here to here. I've got to go another 33.7 degrees negative, which is a negative 223.7? 13. Basically 180 plus the 33.7, make it negative because you're going downward. We just found the two positive walk forwards. We now need to find negative two. Next up, we need to find if I walk backwards. And so we add our dotted line of walking backwards. And we can find the angles to there. So first off, Remember that if this is 33.7, by vertical angles, this is also 33.7. And since we know that, to walk backwards, which means I don't want to be here, I want to be over here, I will then go straight to it. And I'll actually have to go down 33.7. And if I go straight down, that is 
negative, going clockwise. Now, the other one is a positive answer because I am going to take the long route all the way around. And if I go all the way around, I'm going to go 360 minus the 33.7. And let's see, 360, so 326.3, I think it's about. Or 33. Oh, 326.3. And that is how you would find all four answers. So the biggest thing is, number one, you plot it. Number two, you find R and you find theta. And theta sometimes is that reference angle. And that reference angle will allow us to add or subtract from or to 180 and 360 to find the other options for answers. Remember, always one positive, 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 negative, 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 and negative, positive. So your homework is to find all four polar forms that we talked about for these three problems. Have a great day.